Hi, and welcome to another episode of Delaware County Political News Meet the Expert. I am your host, Larry DeMarco, and we are here with Drew McGinty. If you didn't see part one, please see that now and then watch this video. Drew, you shared with me that you homeschool your children. For our viewers who send their children to the traditional environment, let us know how the homeschool process works. Okay. So uh, I've been involved with uh, homeschooling my children. I have three. Uh, my oldest is 25. He, um, start, we started with him in 1998. My youngest is 14 and she uh, is still homeschooled. So it's been uh, many years. So if I look at the, we talk about what the kids go through on a regular basis. So uh, there's different styles of homeschooling. Okay, some are called, uh, some follow a very strict uh, protocol uh, and, and they'll use things like the uh, online schools, uh, public schools like K through 12 and other companies that are, uh, and they'll follow very uh, similar regimen to what you might find in a typical public school. And I grew, I went through a public school system in Jengatown. Um, that uh, other families make a decision to, uh, they call it unschooling, where it's all very, um, uh, uh, ad hoc and they figure out uh, what they're going to do on almost sometimes a daily basis uh, and there's others like myself uh, that and my family have decided to do somewhere in the middle depending on the needs of the children and where they are in their their education so uh, that's uh, so those are the three styles um, and I think it, all styles are fine. It's just I think part of it is a, a personal preference or what and, and often it's around what you feel is the best for your children and how they learn the best. Uh, for the parents, uh, they or the, the homes, uh, whoever's providing the homeschooling, maybe a grandparent too, that um, it is a, a difficult job. The number one uh, uh, skill the person has to have or capability is patience. It requires lots of patience. Uh, it, and uh, not everybody has that. Uh, so if you have the patience, then you have to have the, the dedication and the passion to do it. And, and many do. So uh, once you have those two, you, you don't really need to have any degree. You don't have to have any degree in education or teaching or anything, really. As long as you have those two key things and you're there to uh, educate your children or your grandchildren, whomever, um, then you really have the base components that you need. Uh, now, parents uh, and, and grandparents, they, uh, now back in 1998 when you started, there wasn't the, uh, we didn't have all uh, offerings from, that the internet provides. And you, a lot of it was done through mail order and it was more difficult to customize things and a lot more challenging back then. But as technology has improved and, and become, and the uh, internet is being more ubiquitous, you have a lot more resources, a lot more options out there. And so if you feel you want, a person feels they want to homeschool their child, uh, then, and they are strong in certain subject areas and weaker in others, that's fine. There's lots of resources out there that um, can complement uh, your, your, your weaknesses or your, where you may not feel comfortable educating your child. Um, so there's a lot, uh, the, the, the key thing with uh, the parents can offer a lot of variation. Now, um, of course, in Pennsylvania has probably this, uh, some of the stricter or most strict uh, homeschooling laws in the in the country, but at a high level, uh, you basically between eight and sixteen years old, the children have to have the same amount of um, uh, educated. I think it's one hundred eighty uh, days per year, um, and in Pennsylvania, uh, at the end of every school year, you ha the child has to be during those ages has to be evaluated by a certified homeschool evaluator. So that means the parents have to keep, uh, or in the children when they're older too, uh, it, keep a portfolio of everything that they have worked on and it can count, account for the 180 days and account for also the uh, subject areas that are required by state law as well. So, um, but within these, uh, the guidelines of the laws, there's so much flexibility that parents and grandparents have uh, to work within that. And uh, there's a more planning involved um, because you're trying to tailor your uh, education around your children and their, maybe their interests and maybe their needs or their, you know, where they excel in, where they don't, where they have trouble and where they don't. So my, older two, uh, my two older children were not as good in math. 
So we had to try different things on that to make, you know, get them up. My youngest is much better at math, so we don't have to be concerned with that, but there's other subject areas that we can focus on. Um, so that's it. So there's, there is planning involved, uh, and you, and typically the planning will happen, uh, the, several months before the beginning of the, new, the school year uh, to just get ready and, and talk to the children, as they, especially as they get older, what are you interested in? Uh, and looking at the back, let's focus and let's tailor it together. One of the key things with homeschool education is you were able to uh, collaborate with the children and, and come up with a curriculum and work through it during the school year. Uh, that, uh, that's a key advantage too. That, and they learn, they get more responsibility. They understand if they want to, if they, for example, like to learn about biology, then you can work that into the sciences that year. So there's a lot of, uh, but it, and it's good to kind of work with the children to kind of create that curriculum, then execute on it. Now, most children, when they get about 13, they, they're they usually self-directed by that time. You outline the agenda and usually it takes the parent uh, about one session a week at that point because you say here's what you, you what's due for the week. At the end of the week, we go over it. Okay, so, uh, and by 13 about, you get people more self-directed. Um, and on many homeschool kids, like my two older and probably my younger will do, my youngest will do, uh, at, fi at, at 15 years old and among, they live among, Montgomery County, uh, Montgomery County Community College um, offers, you can start classes at age 15. And those classes count as both high school and they count as college. So uh, they get a, they round the 15, 16 year, uh, years old, they go into the, usually the, often, not, not everybody, but many will go to the community colleges. And some will even go to local high school, public high schools or other uh, private schools at that time when, when you have uh, other uh, um, subjects that maybe require kind of some more uh, higher level education to deliver. So that's uh, give you just a thumbnail sketch of what, uh, you know, what it's like to be a homeschooled. So someone, in a traditional school environment, their routine would be they get up in the morning, get changed, go to the school bus, at the end of the school day, jump in the school bus, and they come home. What would be the daily routine for the homeschooled child? Yeah. Again, that goes back, it, it will depend on what is agreed upon and what the family wants to do. Uh, some, I know, some homeschoolers that get their kids up at a certain time, and they try to mimic what a school but one of the things about a school, or going to a traditional school, is you don't have a lot of the administrative work that you would have, like home, home, uh, home rooms and other administrative, going from time to go from class to class and different things. So the, the days are more compact usually. And more efficient. And more efficient. And I think that's if you, uh, public educators would agree that a lot of the time spent in the day is around administration and not education. Uh, so uh, I think the data has pretty, been pretty clear on that. Um, so you don't have that. Uh, but people can mimic it or they may, uh, you know, uh, in some co high schools, not many, but some are starting to realize that, you know, the biology for uh, people changes over when, uh, when you get become a teenager, you tend to wake up later and stay up later. So you can gear as the children get up, you know, as they change, then their body chemistry changes. Okay, rather than have to get up at 8 a.m., well now you'll have to be up by 10 or by 11, but as long as you get your work done. And then, uh, you know, then you can adjust their schedules to meet the kids' needs. So, yeah, so it is, it can be uh, very different from the high school, uh, from a typical um, a school system. Uh, but some, uh, but oftentimes it, it can be the same and it can be different. It depends on the family and what they're what they want to do. You also mentioned that you get to a point where, or later on in the education, the child gets a weekly plan and he can get there as fast as he wants. Mm -hmm. Now it sounds like the advanced child can finish potentially by Tuesday and then have three full days free, right. but the slower child may even have to do that work on a weekend. Exactly. 
It depends on the child and the subject and their and their and the time of their life and what their uh, how, where their development is. Um, oftentimes, and my uh, older kids have done this, and, and most likely my youngest will do it too. Is if they have get ahead of the schedule, then oftentimes they'll volunteer at local. Uh, my my middle daughter she volunteered at a uh, uh, a food pantry for three years. So she would go on a regular basis, would finish her work, and would go and. And she learned so much as part of that, just being involved with, uh, you know, uh, engaged in a, a community um, food bank and, and all the things that have to be done to run the food bank and get, and, and it, it was also a valuable education experience. Also, if there, uh, a lot of times with homeschools, if you're finished the work or they, they work it around it, there are uh, cooperatives and homeschool groups where young people will get together and they'll do different subjects or they'll do different activities or projects. Uh, in some cases, depending on the school district and the county, uh, and it varies even across Pennsylvania, um, that they'll open up the school to the sports for if they're interested in sports and they, they want to go to the high school for a sport. So you have these options. And some are, some high school, school districts will allow certain things, some will not. It all depends on where you live. Um, but again, it gives that flexibility. If somebody finishes up faster, they can go and do more things. It not, it's not necessarily a formal education. It could be that informal uh, internship kind of education or community service that provides invaluable education as well. What is the daily routine of a parent or okay. guardian homeschooler? Well, in our, in our family, uh, the mother stayed home and I could afford to, we, we lived mo very modestly where we could afford, and that was a decision we made as a family, that so she could stay home and, 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 and teach the children. And then ultimately now she, she works uh, part-time, now that the young, there's only one child and she's 14, so more self-directed, gives more her time to go out and, and work. So, um, but if you have to work, if both uh, parents have to work, um, then it, it, homeschooling becomes uh, more problematic and challenging, and it may not even be feasible uh, because if there's nobody there or there's no group you can send them to to do this or cooperative, then your choices are limited. They have to go to a traditional school system. Time efficiency, mm -hmm. the ability to have a student be advanced rapidly consistent with his intellectual ability are some benefits that you've already mentioned. What are some of the other pros to, homeschool, to homeschooling? Um, I think any educator would agree that um, the, the more individualized attention a child gets, the more likely they'll be successful. So uh, in a, a, a typical school system, you'll, uh, you know, the, there's the always, the, the concern is how many teachers to student rate, the teacher to student ratio. In a homeschooling situation, it's often one to one, one to two, one to, it's not, and at different levels require different levels of attention. So it's, you're not necessarily, the younger ones will require more, older ones will require less. So, um, the advantage is, is so that's so the advantage is a key thing is you have that individualized attention, okay, and uh, where in a traditional school system for the most part, not all, but you have to there has to be you have to kind of uh, target the education toward the eighty percent, okay, you know the, the 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 bulk of it, so you have to get as many people through and as educated as possible, and that's needed for the, the society. But you know, if you the ideal is to have one-on-one -on -one education that you could send in that time. So you don't. Off, sometimes you do get one with one with one on one with uh, homeschooling, but at the worst case, it's just a few to one. So that's one of the major key advantages. Uh, uh, in addition to what I've already talked about, um, that that attention and, and being there and guiding them and you don't have to be the expert uh, in any subject matter you have to be you know concerned open listening uh, figuring out how to solve the problems and get them if they're having trouble for example uh, there nowadays there are multiple types of mathematical math uh, training uh, curriculums and approaches out there so uh, if you find one say online that works great if it doesn't you have to say well i see it's not working i see you're not able to do these things let's look at another 
program, try that, see if you understand that works better for you. Frequently done, that you can go and say adjust the curriculum, which you can't do typically or most often in any other type of school, traditional school system. You can't change the curriculum for that individual child. You have already discussed the fact that it takes an enormous time expense mm -hmm. from the perspective of the parent right. or teacher. What are some of the other cons to homeschooling? Okay, so um, it, it can be expensive. The, the costs have, uh, because you have to get your own materials. Uh, the, uh, there's, no you, there's, there's little or no assistance you can get. Uh, outside of it, it's similar to a private school, and 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 we have uh, we we never thought uh, our family has always been about no we need public education we don't want anything taken away from the publication public education we're making a personal choice, and this personal choice requires us to spend more money on average on than we would going to a traditional school, uh, and that was a personal decision we made and we could make it uh, we uh, and. So, but not to distract, you know, take away anything from public school systems at all in terms of money or attention. So, um, but you don't have the support necessarily of the community, the, 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 the state or the school district typically. Uh, you have to, so that's a con where you have to, sometimes if you're, uh, you don't have all the resources, you ha it's tough to get them. Uh, you have to go typically to other people, to co cooperatives. Uh, very common in the homeschool group where you get people together. For example, if um, it, language is a requirement at a certain age, I forget which one, uh, that you have to take so many units of uh, language. So in one case, we uh, parents got together and we hired, we shared the cost among a lot of parents to hire a tutor to come in and at a certain facility and provide the educate the the the, uh, the language education because so that ha that had to so we're not going to get that support that support doesn't typically come from the 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 school districts or the community it comes from the well at whole it comes from the homeschool community that's not one exception that you're allowed to take advantage of the public school teacher yeah. or class some it, it depends by county it depends by uh, school district and in some cases the school uh, there are the question too is it will are they supposed to do things versus will they make it a difficult for you to do it so uh, some school districts are more co uh, open and work better with homeschool families and but many do not and refuse to so you've done this with all your children. It obviously worked for you. Mm -hmm. How did your children respond to this environment? It was it was uh, it was interesting. Um, they the older ones certainly uh, have been successful. My oldest uh, works now. Uh, graduated from Temple. Went, went through a the dual enrollment between Montgomery County and Temple, M Montgomery County Community College and Temple University, more of these dual enrollments when he was turned 16. He got his associates and his degree and his uh, high school diploma within a month of each other. Then he went automatically on the Temple. Then he's now uh, working for the city of Philadelphia. Uh, my youngest, uh, my middle, she's at uh, Temple. And my youngest is, has, we don't, she's 14 when we're gonna start thinking about, you know, community college then going on to whatever university or trade, skilled trade. I always talk to my kids about consider the skilled trades too. So they, the older ones chose uh, an academic path, but we were certainly open to a skilled trades path too. And, and my, I've told my 14 year old that that's discussions coming probably within the next six months to a year recently. So, uh, but giving her that option. Um, when I asked my son when he graduated Temple, and he graduated with honors, and he said, uh, compare that to Montgomery County Community College to homeschooling. He said homeschooling was the toughest. And I'm like, I was, I was fascinated by that response. And he said, because we, we were, when we worked in our group, we had to set our, th we had to set our uh, curriculum, and when we got older and set, and we would work in a co we, they went to a cooperative, so, we were putting pressure, peer pressure was on us to get things done in the project and things like that. And, the, and we kept, uh, uh, everybody kept driving the people to, uh, further and educating and learning and, and, and not, uh, so it was, uh, uh, it was very uh, peer driven. 
uh, and, and from an education perspective and a loving of education. Competitive. Very competitive. Um, but yeah, very competitive, uh, much more than, and he found it very much more competitive in uh, homeschooling and the, the cooperatives than he did at even, even Temple University. Not to, I'm not saying that Temple was not competitive, I'm just saying the peer pressure and the family drive for education Understood. can end up being um, more powerful, in my opinion, than the actual going to like a junior college or a, a, a four-year university. What lessons could be learned from homeschooling that can we be applied to the nation's education system? The big thing that all, uh, I've asked, I've been, I'm often asked that question, and my the the bi best thing we could do, uh, or the thing we learn the most from homeschooling is standardized tests don't really help that much, um, and we focus much of our uh, money and attention in the uh, in school systems, we drive toward educating children how to take tests. And I, I, I know there are a lot of educators out there that agree with me. And, they, they're, and what we learn with homeschooling is you don't need tests, those kind of standardized tests, to be successful. Okay? The, um, and um, there's no requirement to take any standardized tests in the state of Pennsylvania. They'll administer in the school districts to see how they're doing. But there's no there's no law that requires such, and um, now we as a family decided on occasion to do tests, uh, uh, just to see not as many, but say the PSAAs and some of the uh, some of the uh, eight, at eighth grade just to see where they are compared to other other children, and they were never below average. Okay, they were usually at or above average on things. So we we just wanted a self kind of test, kind of a check on. Uh, the work we were doing, and uh, we learned that the, these tests were you know, it, it were fine. Homeschooling work. We could we could meet all the requirements of these tests, and not have to prepare for them. So to me, there's so much time and effort. Where really that should that time and effort and the money that we talked about should be redirected. And also the other thing too is, um, and when we talk about that too, testing to go to college. But as I mentioned before. College is not necessarily the, the answer to economic security as it once was. They're a equally as good path of the skilled trades. And when you have, in homeschooling, you can offer. And I know, for example, uh, 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 one young woman who's my daughter, the youngest age, she's 14 too, she's involved with a program that's around robotics. She spends a lot of time in this robotics program in Delaware County, and it's associated with the Girl Scouts, and they gear all the education around something she's passionate about and she loves, and she learns how to uh, cut, met, do metal work. She learns how to weld. She learns all these things, and she learns the, uh, the networking component, the, the hydraulics, the, all the components, plus writing press releases for their competitions. She learns all this so she can now decide at some point whether what path she may want to go. It could be to the skilled trade where she's repairing robots or building things or working with her hands versus maybe the engineering aspects where designing robots. So to me, if we're focused on testing that focuses on going to a four-year or on to college, we're doing a major an incredible disservice to all of our young people today. Drew, back to IT for a moment. How does the rapidly changing world of technology complicate parenting and education? Well, technology has, like anything else in life, has its uh, good and bad parts of it. So well, let's talk about the good. So when we talk about education now, uh, and including homeschooling education, um, it provides so many options and more flexibility for so many uh, children. Uh, around the country and around the world that we didn't have a year ago, five years ago, ten years and, and beyond. So it, it, it's an incredible facilitator of education and, and in my opinion better education, more focused edu education, uh, more individualized education um, and, and gives you that flexibility that you often need with, with young people depending on their needs. Uh, and the time uh, and where they are in their lives. Uh, so the downsides there are as as well. Uh, we have again we have rapid change, and it's hard for uh, parents 
to understand uh, you know, the new technology because it comes out. And the, the young people are often more ahead of us than, than uh, on, on that new technology. And you know, being the, you know, what, uh, who children are, they can, they can potentially use that the, the technology for wrong purposes. For instance, like uh, cyberbullying and taking pictures of inappropriate things and texting, you know, inappropriate uh, messages to people and uh, when it comes to bullying, but harassment and all sorts of things that the technology also can be used for that, you know, we as parents uh, may not, uh, you know, be fully aware that that's even a possibility. They're difficult to supervise too right. because it's their own privacy that they have that right. we can't have instant access to right. what they're doing. It's not like it was where you have a the telephone with a long cord that the you know in your house and you maybe had one or two cords when I was growing up. So your parents could were always in earshot of what was being said on the phone. And we can watch them physically, but yeah. we can't watch what they're doing yeah. in cyberspace. In a, and in cyberspace, it becomes more and more challenging now to figure out what they're doing. Uh, yeah, when my, my older, older kids were younger, we had one computer in the center of the room. We could see what was going on, but nowadays everybody has their smartphones. They, can, they have it with them anywhere they go. And so the thing that is, is, in fact, a computer itself. Itself it? that does everything and more than computers did years, even just a few years ago. And, you know, and children can be mischievous, they, and then they can also be creative and find new and different ways to use technology that what it wasn't intended to be used for. And, and, and really, they're, they're not de developed yet to understand oftentimes between what's appropriate, what's inappropriate, what's right or wrong. And that's where a lot of children get into trouble with the technology. So um, it, it is challenging, I think, as parents, we need to be engaged with the kids. We need to be more open with them and say, let's talk about these things on a regular basis and, be, uh, and let them have that open dialogue where it's not going to be, uh, we're gonna, you're gonna get in trouble, but like, if you have a question about something, whether it's right or wrong or it's inappropriate or not, you know, come to me with it and let's discuss it. Let's research it and figure this out together as a family and, and come up with what, what, what should be done. Um, that's one thing. We also need, uh, and, and, but sometimes parents don't necessarily, they're not, they don't, they may not have the time or they may not have the aptitude or, uh, for technology to kind of figure this stuff out. So we also have to depend on our law enforcement community uh, to be up to speed on what's going on out there and how to appropriately, what's, what's, what's legal, what's not, what's borderline, what's not, what should we be doing to educate the community as a whole. What, and also we need our lawmakers to be aware of this, to kind of put laws in the place that once these things come, in, you know, come up, that we can more quickly address them to the best of a lawmaker can. can. Um, to uh, hopefully reduce the risk or prevent some of this uh, maybe bad behavior. You but anticipated it, my next yeah. question. Go ahead. Yeah. Are laws where they need to be right now in no. IT? No. And you know what? The one thing is I don't think they'll, with anything else when it comes to IT, laws take time to change, okay? The change will, the, the, rap, the, the change of IT will, outpace the change of laws. It'll change the outpace the change of parents. So what's gotta be an outpace the change, you know, how can law enforcement change? To me, it's a collaborative effort. We all have to be aware and vigilant. And I think it gets back to like basic, prem, you know, basic things re, with or with that technology. Um, it, you know, I don't believe we're, do, we're not doing much that hasn't been done by a human before. It's just the way, it's how it's being done. The what is pretty much the same, the behavior. Uh, how it's being done is maybe a little bit more, it's faster, it's maybe a little bit, um, you know, it's not understood by us, uh, by everybody, um, but um, we need to kind of it, it, be constantly aware that it, it will outpace, but we have to be constant, we have to have a process in place and we have to be uh, vigilant and, and continue to say, let's re-look, look, look, and reassess on a frequent basis what we do. Uh, school, the school systems too are an important part of it too, that, that they're kept up to speed on what's going on. And it, we need to kind of get ahead of the curve if we can and anticipate, we can't anticipate everything, but we, could, we, can, we can be better at reacting 
uh, more efficient, quickly and more effectively when something comes out and, 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 and not have to have it become a big problem before we, we, we start really looking at solving it. Drew, regarding this issue of lawmaking, how are you personally looking to make a difference? Uh, I decided to run for Congress in Pennsylvania's 7th District because I think, I, I know I have the skills and experience um, to really represent the people better uh, in the district. So, and, and in a variety of ways. First is, um, I am a first time candidate. Uh, I have, I, I'm not beholding to any uh, uh, PAC or organization for my, uh, for, for money. I'm in it to, I'm not in it to make a career out of it. I'm in it to uh, serve the people in the community. Uh, I have, that's one. I think a lot of, uh, the second thing is I am, I have a lot of knowledge uh, and, and, and skills that I've developed over the years from both my professional and, and, and not-for-profit ex or nonprofit experience that I could apply, uh, and especially in terms of being able to work with a variety of different people, uh, whether I agree with them or not, uh, or whether I like them or not, uh, but work with them to find common ground uh, figure out ways to get things done. That has been what I've been known for pretty much my whole, for, for 30 years in both those areas. Uh, so I can bring those same talents and skills to um, Congress, certainly. And I think the, the other component is um, I have the wealth of experience, especially in the healthcare industry, and so many people are um, uh, suffering from uh, our healthcare system, which is incredibly broken, and we, we all know that. And coming up with, because I have over 22 years experience now in the healthcare industry, I can really make a difference. I understand how it works. I know how to get, I know what, from the health insurers to the health, health systems to the, you know, the, the government health, uh, the state health departments. I know what it needs, what happens there. I know how to get things done there. And I, and I, and I have a lot of great ideas in terms of how to move forward in trying to fix our, in, in fixing our healthcare system. So ultimately, um, we have, uh, everybody can have high quality and affordable health care at every point in their life. So to me, I can really make a difference with that experience and uh, coming to the table here that I think uh, none of my can uh, op opponents do. And I think that practical experience will help a lot of people uh, and I can make that big difference in their lives. And I really, that's really my driving, fa the driving factor and, and I'm passionate about helping others. We'll leave it there. And I want to thank you for being a guest on Delaware County Political News. Thank you, Larry. Thank you for having me. We have been here with Drew McGinty, and I am your host, Larry DeMarco. If you like this video, please don't forget to like, follow, share, subscribe, and forward this link to all the friends on your contact list and Facebook friends. We're signing off. Tune in next time. Bye for now.